Hello, everyone. My name is Cindy. I'm a member of the communications team for the Calgary Zoo. And today, I'm coming to you guys from a very special location. We are here at the Devonian Wildlife Conservation Center, and we are going to be checking in with one of our keepers, Michelle, and our greater sage grouse flock. So I'm going to turn this over to Michelle, and she's gonna let you guys know what we are doing today. Hey everyone, welcome. We're super excited to have you guys here. It's been a really crazy week for us uh, down here at the Sage Grouse compound. Um, as of last Thursday, our hens started laying eggs. So I'm gonna take you guys out there shortly. We're gonna do a little uh, egg hunt. Um, so I just wanna explain a few things first. So mm -hmm. every morning when we get here, uh, once we know there's eggs out in our nest sites, we do an egg check first thing in the morning. So this morning we went out there, we checked all of the nest sites, we recorded all of our eggs, so that's what I have here is our egg chart. Wow. So we record where we're finding the eggs, all the eggs get a number, we record what, uh, what nest site the egg came from, and then we service. So we awesome. clean up the pens, we get the birds set up for the day, and we feed them. And while we're doing that, we're sort of monitoring to see which birds are going where. So we'll kind of see which hens are hanging out on which nest sites. And then in the afternoon, we're gonna go back out and do another egg check. So that's what we're gonna go do. So I'm gonna take this egg curtain with me. So just so you guys know, some of our eggs, the hens sit on and incubate and raise chicks. Some mm -hmm. of the eggs we bring into the incubation trailer and we, uh, we incubate them artificially and we hatch them and we raise them by hand. So this allows us to spread the birds out. Um, it makes the workload a little bit lighter for the hens, mm -hmm. a little bit lighter for us. It also spreads out the bio load, so all of the chicks have a better chance at making it. So when we do take an egg from a hen, we replace it with a beautifully made artificial egg. So this is not a real sage grouse egg, but it's very, very close to. So um, it's a fake egg that are Those lovely. Are awesome. They're beautiful. We have an amazing assistant, um, and one of our managers created these for us this year, so they're absolutely fantastic. So we just take this, put it in the nest in replace of one of those valuable eggs that we're going to bring into our incubator. That is so cool. And they were hand painted by the assistant. They correct? were hand painted, and so they're awesome. actually quite hard to tell apart from the real eggs. You guys will see once we can get into those nest sites. So um, you may see me pull an egg and take it to the trailer. You may not. We'll see what we find out there. Today. Today, uh, but that's what we do. So awesome. these are all my supplies. We're gonna go check some nest sites out and see what's going on. So let's do it. Let's are do you guys it. excited? I'm excited to go out there and see our birds. So here we go. We are going through the first set of screens. So all right, sorry about that. Little jumpy. Do we need to close no, that? Okay. We are good. We're so good. this is one of the areas. We have two separate groups in here. So on either side are two different breeding groups. Uh, you can see it's pretty calm this morning. It <laughs> it's pretty calm this afternoon. This morning it was not. So in the morning <laughs> when it's a little bit cooler, the males are displaying, the females are really nesty. And that's when we see a lot of activity. It's the early afternoon, it's getting a little warmer. So the birds are pretty calm. Okay. We're gonna go in and check a few nest sites. Oh, I'm just gonna pop this stuff down here. All right, so we are going in with the birds right now. Now, will there be males and females both in these nest sites? There will be. So, males and females have access to the pens. Cool. Generally, the males leave the nest sites alone, which is absolutely fantastic. And the females will create the nest sites. Sometimes they share the nest. Uh, sometimes they have their own. It really depends on the area and the hen. So, okay. some nests are really big and some nests are really small. So sometimes you can get a bunch of eggs in a nest because multiple hens are sharing it. And sometimes it's a small nest because it's only one hen. So we right. have a mixture of both. So we're gonna okay. go check out some areas in here. Let's do it. So I hope you guys can see. All right. This is one of our nest sites here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit closer guys. And try not to disturb. So we have a hen on this nest site. You guys can probably hear her cooing. Yes. You can kind of see her in there. So if you can't see, because they blend right in. So they these do. guys camouflage right in to their environment. And this is obviously uh, because they can camouflage right in the wild and be safe from predators. So we have a hen on here right now. She's moving some grass materials onto the nest site. So based on these observations, what I would say is she likely laid an egg here in the last hour. Wow. 
And now she's adding more stuff to cover up that egg. And you know, later today or even tomorrow morning, uh, if she hasn't moved off the nest site by the end of the day, tomorrow morning we'll likely find a new egg here. So Very cool. She really blends in very well there. She blends in excellently. I don't even know if you guys can see her under there, but you can, there, you can see her head. She was just moving. Wow, that's super cool. So this is really great. So they're going through all the proper behaviors. They're laying eggs. They're covering them up. They're doing all those things. Now, once she lays that egg, she's actually going to leave that nest site for quite some time. They lay about every 24 to 36 hours and in between they don't stay with the nest. So cool. once they're done laying all their eggs, they'll start incubating. But in the meantime, they'll lay an egg, they'll leave, they'll come back, lay another egg, they'll leave. So uh, she'll be off there in maybe an hour or two and uh, then she'll come back the next time she needs to lay. So we'll go see another egg site. Okay, let's go. We have Lynn and her grandson Grady watching and Grady is wondering how we tell males and females apart. That's a great question. So right now it's really easy to tell the males and females apart, but that's not always the case. So generally the best way you can do it is that females are about half the size of the males. So the males can be up to three kilograms um, and the females are like one, one and a half kilograms. So they're a lot smaller. Right now, and if a male comes out, actually we can just take a little, we'll, we'll walk on over to a male so you can see. All right, we'll take a detour. So, oh, if you guys can see through is. the mesh here, we have one of our males standing there. So right now, because our males are in display mode, they have that beautiful white patch sort of on the front of them, and then they make that big display. So our males are quite a lot bigger, and they have this crazy display. We'll see if we get it on camera or not today. They're a little bit quiet right now. But yes, they're quite a bit know. bigger and they've got that nice white chest. So that's really how you can tell the males and the females apart. Okay. I think we'll definitely see some males. Yes, we will. Up we close here today. So we're going to check one more site. Okay. And then we're going to go to another group. So Perfect. the reason I'm checking these sites is because I've seen hens in the area today. So I'm just going to go and check and see if there's anything new at the nest site. Perfect. Uh, now Glenda's asking what kind of birds are these? These are sage grouse. So they're greater sage grouse and they're the largest grouse in North America. So they're quite a large bird. Very cool. We have another nest. So we do. So there's no female here right now. Okay. So when I want to check a nest site, we have some of our pots, we have some of our plants uh, potted and some of our plants actually planted. Okay. So I can just move this guy out of the way if I want to do a safe check of these eggs. And I'm going to let you come right in. Sure. So you can see, you can't see much right now. However, if I move my hand away, you can see some beautiful eggs in there. Let's see, oh, there's some, there we go. So that's what a nest looks like. Now this is a small nest, just one hen is laying in here. Um, and these are her two eggs. So I've seen these two eggs before, uh, nothing to label here right now, nothing new, but just monitoring and good to know what's on the site right now. So we're just gonna cover that right back up exactly how we found it. Put the plant right back in the same location and then walk away. So just a quick check, nothing new. Uh, but really cool to see the see the nest site right now. That was really cool. And those eggs definitely looked very similar to those dummy eggs yes, that you had shown. Exactly. So you guys might not be able to hear it, but right now I can hear some hens cooing um, in some nearby bushes in different pens. So I'm kind of all just like taking note of that mm -hmm. and I'll come back later and check those sites. Knowing that a hen's on there right now, I'm not going to be able to see much and I'm definitely not going to push her off. So uh, right. she can stay on there as long as she wants and then once she leaves, I'll go investigate. That's very cool. Hey, we have the Citadel Park Grade 3s tuning in today. Hello, hey guys. guys. They are wondering what do our sage grouse eat? So our sage grouse uh, eat a variety of things. We have some stuff on the ground right now. Uh, they get mixed greens and lettuce. Obviously they have water as well. Um, all the pens have multiple water dishes, so they have ample access. Water. They actually also pick at the fresh green grass that's coming up. Um, we offer them sage clippings that we harvest in the fall. There's also a pellet that they get and they get worms and peas every day too. So worms and peas are sort of their favorite items. We give them worms first thing in the morning and we give them peas the last thing we do at night. So they all come out and see us. We can make sure everybody's healthy and everyone gets their favorite snack. So that's, that's what they cool. eat. Pretty cool. And of course, sage grouse are eating the sage. Yeah. Um, we have a few questions wondering about the different things that people can see in the exhibit. Yeah, The kind absolutely. of little tunnel and the little hut house over there. Absolutely. So, um, obviously most of the enclosure is quite natural. Uh, you do see, we call them the play pens and the tubes. So the reason that we have these non-natural items is actually for uh, protection and safety and 
easy handling. So sage grouse are flushing birds, meaning that when they when they're disturbed or in the wild when a predator comes, they flush and to, to get out of that space. So they have really powerful muscles. So when we need to catch them for you know a checkup if something is wrong, um, or just like every year we catch them up to make sure everybody's doing well, or if we need to move them around for different groups to set up our breeding groups, we need to catch them safely. So what we actually do is we'll walk them into one of these nice soft tubes. Mm -hmm. So if they do rustle around in there a little bit, they're protected, they're not gonna hurt themselves, not gonna hurt their head, not gonna hurt their wings. And then we can easily walk them into a crate. So it makes it really safe for us, really safe for them. Um, we leave them in all the time because the birds actually kind of like hanging out in there. So <laughs> it's a little uh, shelter from the sun in the summer. In the winter, it's like kind of forms a little igloo with all the snow around it. So yeah. they like to hang out in the tunnels. So they're not the most natural things in the world, but they're super important for us. It makes it things safe. Um, and also when you add a new piece in, when you're going to do a catch up or when you want to when something's wrong and you need to see an animal when you add that new piece in that can actually freak them out quite a bit so they're habituated to it they know what it is they actually like it so it's pretty easy to get them to walk in there and then we can easily safely get them into a crate so awesome. that's why we have them. thank you that makes total sense of course so we're it's gonna better just... to just leave them in than take them in and out in and out right? absolutely okay guys we are leaving and going into another pen so I think because these guys are pretty calm, pretty relaxed, we're gonna go and visit a different group in a different area of the sage grouse compound. So All right. we're gonna say goodbye to the breeding pens. Okay. And we're gonna go over to our flight pens. So we'll take a little right. walk. We're going on a journey. This is a great time for some questions. As we walk, yeah, yeah, let's take some questions. For sure. So let's see, Aurora, who's nine years old, is yes. wondering if these birds have any names. Aurora, that is a wonderful question. So every single bird we have here has a name and it's kind of the funnest part naming them so <laughs> once we have birds and they hatch everybody gets a name and everybody also gets a unique band identifier so on their legs you may notice some colors so those colors indicate to us who they are so for example we have sable she is red yellow so we always see a red yellow band on a small hen. We know it's sable, so we know the name and the color band. So that's how we can tell everyone apart and everybody has a special name. Aw, that's wonderful. And maybe we'll get to see some of the birds if uh, there's any that we can point out. Yes, we I think this that. next pen, we're gonna have some luck seeing some birds. Perfect. So this is a different part of our compound. This is our flight pen. So. We have our captive flock in here for breeding uh, during this time of the year in the early spring. And then this is where all of our juveniles are gonna go um, before release to work on those flight muscles. So it's quite very a big, cool. beautiful space. It is, it's very, very big space if everybody can see that. So we're gonna take a little walk down this way right. and we're gonna go see, we'll try and get a, a male close up so you guys can see what they look like. Okay. And we'll go check out some more nest sites. The Citadel Park Grade Threes, they're an inquisitive bunch. They are wondering, are these birds aggressive? <laughs> yes. So the females <laughs> are not. The females are lovely. The, they're mostly concerned right now with finding really great places to nest. The males, yes. So okay. traditionally, and what they do here in captivity as well, is that the males are a lecking species. So what that means is all the males will gather in one place and display and put on a show for the females. And so they're trying to outcompete each other so they can get a little aggressive with each other while they're doing this. They're also trying to get a little territory for themselves. So unfortunately, when we go in there to clean every day, we kind of have to enter that territory and then they get a little bit aggressive with us. Now, this aggression only lasts for about two months, which may seem like a long time, but for 10 months of the year, they're super <laughs> lovely. Um, they have lots of personality, they don't bother us. And then this is sort of their natural behaviors. So we can't really blame them. Mm -hmm. um, this is what they do. But I can yes. hear the males. I can yes. hear them making their sounds. They get um, they get a little bit. They like their social distancing. We'll put all it right. that way. So, they they're following all the rules quite well. <laughs> hey, we have Elijah, who's six years old, and uh, is wondering where all of our sage grouse sleep. Where are all the sage grouse sleep? So that's a great <laughs> question. They actually move around quite a bit. So within their pen, they can pretty much sleep anywhere. They like to sleep close up to the netting um, and kind of tuck themselves into pots or under some of the benches that you guys might have seen. So those are kind of the classic roosting areas, but they switch it up on us. Um, yeah, every day is different. So. Every day is different. Yeah. Very cool. 
but they do sleep on the ground. So a lot of birds will sleep up in trees. These guys are ground dwelling, so they're always going to roost on the ground and kind of tuck themselves in. Mm, interesting fact yeah. about the sage grouse. So we're going to walk beside the pen we're going to enter here. Okay. Um, this right here beside me, if you guys can see, <laughs> this is Leonardo. So Leonardo. This guy right here? This guy right All here right. is Leo. He likes to walk beside us when we're walking down this pen. <laughs> so he's probably going to walk all the way with us, which is pretty cute. And again, this is him saying, you're pretty close to my area. What are you doing here? Hi, Leonardo. Look at him. So get then you can up. really see that beautiful white on the front of him. And he's very big. He's talking to you a little he bit. He is. Hi, buddy. So he's checking us out. He's wondering, what are you guys doing? And Leonardo's a bit of a special bird, isn't he? He is a special bird. So Leonardo was one of our founder birds. What we mean by founder bird is he's one of our original birds and he is super successful male as well. So he's actually uh, genetically very important and he sired a lot of our captive flock and he's great. The ladies love him. He's very aggressive <laughs> um, and he's one of those special guys uh, that helped us start our population here. Very cool. So yeah. some of the younger birds would kind of look to him, some of the younger males, yes. right? They would yeah. look to some of the older birds Absolutely. to learn how they should perform yes. and, and do their dance. Yes. The dance is practice makes perfect. Um, so the older they get, the better they do at it. So Leo is definitely a good example for the young guys learning. For awesome. Sure. So we just got a little ways to walk here and then we can okay. get right in with these boys. Let's now, do it. I'm going to say when we go in here, we're probably going to have some greet us. Um, so we probably won't stay in this pen too, too long because okay. the boys do like to get their space. Sure. The reason we're going in here was this morning I saw some girls digging. Now there weren't any eggs in these sites yet, so we don't call them a nest site. There's no egg. We don't know if they're going to lay there, but we got some potential. So we're going to go check it out and see. Maybe they laid an egg. Maybe they dug it a little bit more. We'll go see what it looks like. Let's go check it out. Oh, Kira's wondering, do you have any favorites? Do I have any favorites? Mm -hmm. So they're all my favorite. I yes, knew it. <laughs> I do love them all. There's definitely certain ones that stand out. Um, we try not to say who our favorites are. We don't want to hurt their feelings. So. Gotcha. They They're... have a lot of personality. There's a lot to love about these birds. Absolutely. So we're just going to step in here. I'm going to keep firing off some questions as we go. Absolutely. Ladderus is nine years old and he is wondering how much they weigh. So how much they weigh. So mm -hmm. the girls are weighing approximately like one and a half kilograms and the males are about three kilograms. So not too, not too big at all. We have someone coming over to check us out. So this is Raphael, so we're gonna go <gasps> right in the pen. All right, let's do it. Now, Raph is kind of a superstar. So if you've seen some of our social media photos, they're generally of Raphael. He's <laughs> got a lot of personality. He's got that cute face. Hey, buddy. So this is Raph. You can definitely Ooh. tell he's a male. He's got that burp <laughs> going on. He's also he got those big eyebrows. Um, and then here's a good look. You can see he's got a nice big right, um, red band he with does, the number 95 on it. So this is how I know it's Raphael. This awesome. is also Raphael's spot. He greets us at the door every time we come in here. Um, so yeah, this is, this is his area. And he's just talking to me. He's telling me this is his area. What are you doing? He is a beautiful bird. He is. I wish, I don't know if these colors are, are picking up on camera, but his, the colors of his feather pattern, it's just beautiful. So you can see some of our boys are doing a little bit of displaying in here. Look, you can see their tails are, are out and open. So you might be able to hear it. It's a little, it's a little cloudy, a little loud here right now. So I don't know if you guys can hear or, or see them, but Kevin is the one displaying and <laughs> Kevin. sort of in the middle. Oh, he's doing, he's doing it. He's doing his thing. So Stanley is wondering how many lay, how many eggs a female can lay at, at one time. Yeah. So at one time, a female is only going to lay one egg. So about every 24 to 36 hours, she can lay an egg. Okay. Um, on average, a female can lay five to 10 eggs um, in the wild and in captivity. We see a little bit higher production in captivity, probably because they're protected and they have unlimited supply of good nutritional food and high quality food. So, um, but it really depends on the hen. So we can't guarantee that there's going to be five, eight, nine, mm -hmm. ten eggs. Um, but we know in that range is, is a good nest size. And Elijah is wondering about these birds. Do they ever, would you consider them to be playful? Do they ever kind of, you know, they kind of come up to you, they're scoping out what's happening? Definitely. So this 
moment in time is sort of like their serious the serious moment. So everyone's very focused on breeding. The females are making those nest sites and laying eggs and the males are displaying. Look at this. This is Jasper. So we're approaching Jasper's area. He's not super happy about it. He's going to come investigate. Right. Um, so this is a pretty serious time. So there's a lot of playful things going on right now. Um, but yeah, absolutely. One of the like most precious things that they do is they love to dirt bath. So they'll find like a nice little pile of dirt and they'll roll around in it. I have some great videos. I'll try and pass those to Cindy so you, she can post them for you guys. I'll share them. Um, I will yeah. share them with you so guys. So that's, uh, that's one of the cutest things that they do is they'll have these great dirt baths. You kind of find them all lined up sometimes. So that's very interesting. I did not know that about sage grouse. And who's coming up here so now? So this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. We got Molson and Jasper. So they're definitely curious about what we're doing here. They are. <gasps> There's a full display. That's Did a, you guys see that? It's wonderful. So we're going to keep walking because Kevin's go. telling us it's Kevin's time to saying, walk. saying beat it. Kevin is saying this is my area. <laughs> and there's a little hen over here walking. So you can see quite the size difference <gasps> there and how she well is. she blends in. She does. She blends in really well. Yeah. I've kind of lost her visually. There she is. Yeah. It's pretty crazy how they blend right into the environment. They do. So we have Citadel Park grade threes again. They are nice. coming I'm with the it. questions. We love this. Um, where do these guys live in the wild? And they're yes. also kind of wondering, you know, what's their status? Are they hunted? Have, have people hunted them? Are they endangered? Yeah, so right now uh, in the United States, they're uh, listed as near threatened. In Canada, however, they're critically endangered. Um, so what that means is there's only about 200 left in Canada and you're only going to find them in the very south of Alberta and Saskatchewan. So they're critically endangered and that's why we have this population here in Canada. So we only release in Canada. We're trying to get the Canadian Lex uh, back up to a sustainable level so that these birds can thrive here in Canada in the wild. Yes. They're pretty iconic. They are super um, iconic. So that's why we're doing the program. So that's where you'd find them in Canada. In the United States, <laughs> they hang out. <laughs> Yes. Kevin is not loving us in here. No. So we're going to check. <laughs> we're actually going to head out qu quickly. Okay. What I'm going to show you guys though is here's the nest scrape I was talking about. No eggs yet. Okay. But let's see this. You can see that there's this nice patch of dirt. Oh yeah. Pretty look different at that. from the rest of the grass there. So you can tell that a yep. hen's been in there digging. They've so definitely. hopefully in the next couple of days, we'll see some eggs. And all we're doing now is just monitoring the site, seeing if there's going to be any hens here who that hen is if we see it. And then if there's an egg, we'll label it and we'll, uh, we'll manage it from there. So awesome. Yeah. So let's go check one more group out and then uh, we'll see if we have any new eggs. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Kevin, we're leaving you, buddy. Yeah, we're going. We are on our way. So they do sometimes take us right to the door, but <laughs> it's great. They're, they're telling us that this is their, our space. This is where I'm going to hang out. So we respect them. Exactly. And they and they do pretty good at respecting each other too, which is great. You can see the boys are all pretty spread out from each other. They are, yep. They've kind of got their own little zone. So we're all just right. going to walk through this middle pen. This pen that we're going into right now doesn't have any birds in it. Okay. So it's just a nice little divider between, between our breeding groups. And we're just going to go check the last group for the day. All right, guys. Moving on to the last group here. Great questions, everybody. They're very good. Mandy has said these are very neat birds. They are very neat we birds. Agree. I will agree with you. So, um, not sure if you guys are familiar with Monty. However, Monty is a very special bird to us. He came to us as a wild rescued egg last year. So genetically, he's very important because he came from the wild and he's distinct from the rest of our birds. So Monty's actually in here. Ooh. He's one of these guys right here. He's got the bright green and black Monty. bands. <laughs> now, Monty's kind of being shown the ropes right now. This is Louise, um, his buddy that he likes to display with. So okay. these two hang out down here. Monty's doing his thing. He's displaying. He's doing a great job. Very so good. it's his first year and he's learning. Awesome. There he is, Monty. And the, there's a story with Monty. There is a story with Monty. So, um, yeah, he's super important. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, so this is what happens when another male enters another male's area. He'll just tell him to go away. Um, so Monty will go off to a different spot and Louise will sort of reorient himself in his area yes. and keep displaying. So this is kind of the aggression that you would see between them. So how to, uh, when, when one of these birds are just a young little chick yes, and you're trying to figure out maybe who's a male, who's a female, yeah. and there's a story with Monty about how we came to know 
maybe that Monty yes. was a male. So you guys were asking some great questions and wondering how you tell males from females. So right now it's by size, but when they're all little babies, you definitely can't tell who's who. So when they're very, very little, you will start to see the little tiny chicks try and do this display. Now it's pretty adorable. They don't have any of these wonderful feathers. They're just tiny little chicks, but they'll kind of start to strut their stuff around. So when Monty was two days old, he did this little display for us. So we knew pretty quickly that he was a boy and he's turning out to be a superstar boy. So he's doing super awesome. We're really proud of him. Um, go we'll Monty, see. go. Yeah, he's having the time he right now. He is perfecting his dance moves. And he's, he's doing it for the camera for you guys. So he it's is. awesome. So we're gonna go check our last nest site for the day. All right, let's do it. Lisa, now, these are greater sage grouse. That's the birds that we are visiting today. Oh, Heather said Kevin is her favorite. Yes. <laughs> Kevin is actually a lot of people's favorites. Kevin has a lot of spunk and personality, yeah. I think. So we have no hand on this nest, so I'm gonna just pull this right, back so you guys can it. see the nest site here. Okay guys, we're now, checking another nest site. So it's pretty dug in, which is great. You can see there's five eggs in there. Wow. Now, because Monty is in this group and he's super valuable, these eggs are really, really valuable to us because if Monty sired any of these eggs, um, then we definitely want to keep them and you know have that genetics in our flock even more. So what we're going to do, because this is a brand new egg, it doesn't have a number yet. All I'm right. going to put a number on it. So what I'll do is I take a quick look at my chart and I find out what's the next number for my egg. So what I'm looking at here, are these some dummy eggs? It like some is. fake eggs in with a real egg? So there's four fake eggs and gotcha. a real egg in there. So you can tell that they're pretty close to the same thing. They are, look at that. So looking at my chart, my next number is 089. So I'm gonna take that egg. I'm gonna label it 089-2020 for the year. Okay. Now, it's not the 89th egg. Um, these are just randomly assigned egg numbers. So just so you guys gotcha. know, we don't have 89 eggs yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this egg gently in here. I'm gonna replace that egg with a dummy. Put it back in the nest site. Cover that nest back up how I found it. Protect this guy. Get everything set back up so it was like I was never here. Right. And then once we get out of the pen, I can fill my chart in and we can go take this egg to the incubator room. Awesome. So that, that sounds great. That's what it looks like when you find a new egg. Those are kind of the steps that you go through. You don't always take the egg. Like I said, um, some of the hens will get to keep their eggs out here and there's lots of eggs in nest sites still, but because this one is really important, we're going to make sure that nothing happens to it uh, and we're going to take it inside. So Excellent. we'll go there next great. so you guys can see our incubation room. Okay, cool. You guys, we're going to get to see the incubation room. This is very cool. This so is a again, big day. Some males are out here. We got some females out. You can see the females blend right in. You can hardly go. see them. There's some of the ladies. Yeah. So you guys can see females versus here's some of the males with that big, lovely white feather and their big tails. They really put on quite a visual show. Um, another thing that's really important is that audio. If yeah. so you can hear that booming and that swishing of their feathers, so all of those things uh, indicate to the female, uh, come choose me. So that's what they're doing. They're telling the females to come choose me. And something that Michelle actually taught me is that these males, they're putting on this big display, this big show, and they're fluffing up their feathers and they're making that pop with their chest, but the females are actually listening. They're actually listening for those noises, and it's not exactly all of the big visual display but they're they're looking more for the audio sounds it's really hard because as humans we we really focus on the visual so um it's definitely important if it wasn't important they wouldn't get those big fluffy exactly. tails and they wouldn't have those big yellow eyebrows but also the auditory is super important for them as well so um we like to minimize disturbance here for all of those reasons we want yes. the females to have have lots of opportunity to check the males out, whether that's visual or auditory. Mm -hmm. We give them some time in the morning as well to just hang out and be by themselves. We make sure everybody's doing well in the mornings, but then we back off and let them do their thing. And um, yeah, All we right. don't... That, no, that, go ahead. No, that's super Let's cool. Go. I was gonna say, Stanley is wondering yeah. why the use of the false eggs? 
So the use of the false eggs. So we, we want, so the hens are doing all the right things, right? So like I said, we're gonna take some eggs and incubate them um, and rear them by hand. So the hens will do some for us and we'll do some for the hens. So we're kind of spreading out the workload, we're spreading out the bio load. Uh, so we want all the chicks, chicks to have the best chance as possible. Um, so when we take an egg from the hen, uh, we don't want to disturb the nest site too much. We want all the natural behaviors to still be there. So we replace the egg just so she doesn't know that we've taken mm -hmm. them. Um, right. So she still comes back to the nest site. It doesn't seem like it's disturbed. In the wild, it might look like a predator came to the nest site if all the eggs were gone, and that might deter her from laying there again. Right. So what we want to do is make it look like all of her eggs are there. She's doing a great job. She'll still get to sit on some eggs. Um, so all those natural behaviors are still going to be there. Meanwhile, we're taking some of that workload for her. She just doesn't quite know it. So that's what we're doing there. Excellent. That makes yeah. sense. Um, we have a question coming in from Jennifer wondering yeah. about Monty. So Monty is a very special bird. His genetics are really special. Yes. They're wondering why, or she's wondering why um, he's kept in with the other males. Like, you know, if right. you're unsure whether maybe what yeah. eggs might be coming from Monty. It's a really great question. So because these guys are a lecking species and the males naturally gather together and display, we actually find that the males display better and become better candidates for the females when there's a little bit of a group. So they kind of encourage each other. And because in the first year, uh, younger males don't really know what to do. When you put a younger male with some experienced older males, they actually have a better shot. So it seems counterintuitive that you wouldn't just put Monty with all those females and mm -hmm. see if they breed, but they might not want Monty because he won't be a very desirable male without the other males around to show him how to do it. Right. So slightly complicated. Now in with Monty is a bunch of also very valuable males. So if they don't choose Monty, they're still getting like the second, third best option. And that's kind of how we set up our group. So everybody can breed with everybody in their group. So that's the key. Um, and we have some really interesting groups with some really interesting genetics. And we just, that's why our observations are so important. So we try, try and see what everyone's doing, which males are dominant, likely to be chosen, where the hens are sitting, which eggs belong to which hens. So it's a lot of observational work. And uh, yeah, it's a little, it's counterintuitive, but we have to bring in more males so the one male will have a better shot. That totally yeah. helps me to understand that yeah. better. I hope that that answers your question yeah. as well. That, that makes sense to me, to be honest. He needs to learn from the male. He needs to learn from those older males. So we're just taking a little walk um, past one of our trailers. We do all of our food prep and all of our office work in here. This other trailer here is where all the egg magic happens. So I'm gonna take right. you guys in here. This is the incubation trailer. Yes, it is. So we're gonna go on in. All right, here we go guys. Turn on some lights. Now, because I'm touching eggs and I'm going into a new room, I'm just gonna put a lab coat on. So okay. basically what's going on here, and Cindy, you're good. I've also taken off my boots. Yes. Um, so I just don't want to bring any germs, any dirt, anything I don't have to into the incubation room. We want to keep it nice and clean. So inside the room, I've also got hand sanitizer. So I'm going to throw some of that on before I touch any other eggs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take this really valuable egg inside the incubation room. All right. This room is a little noisy because we have the AC going. So I might lose you after I head on in here. But okay. we're going to give you a peek at some of the eggs that we have in the incubator. Mm -hmm. And just a little look at the room. And then um, I'll probably sign off for the day. So Yeah, we'll let you deal with that egg yeah. and everything that you need to do to take care of it. So here's our incubation room. Again, right. sorry it's a little bit loud. We had a bunch of incubators going. Let's show you guys I'm going to stick this happening. egg down right here. So. I'm going to measure this egg and weigh it and get it in the incubator in just a minute. But if you guys want to check out our incubator right now. Right. So we do have some eggs in this incubator. Look at this. They were just put in a few days ago, so it's really early times. We're super hopeful, but now we get to watch these eggs in here. The hens will watch some eggs outside for us. and That is that's super what we do. amazing. Yeah. That is so awesome. So Michelle has that amazing egg to process and make sure that it gets where it needs to be so we're gonna let her go and finish up on her tasks for the day but thank you so much for yeah. giving us a glimpse of what you do in of a day course. here with the sage grouse i hope you guys had a great time and you love the birds just as much as i do um, we hope to see you at the zoo as soon as, as soon as we can uh, we definitely miss you guys 
and uh, hopefully we'll have a Sage Girls update for you uh, in the next few months. So uh, stay tuned, stay safe out there, everyone, and thanks so much for coming. Thank you. All right, guys, so we are going to sign off here from the Devonian Wildlife Conservation Center. Um, as you know, these are difficult times with our doors closed here at the zoo, but we are doing our best to bring you a daily look of the zoo every day. So make sure that you do check back later today for our daily dose, and then you can tune in tomorrow for our Facebook uh, story time live. And if you are in a position to give, we are warmly accepting donations. It is greatly appreciated. We appreciate all the support coming through from everyone in the community. Um, you can check the link in our description. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation. Have a great day, everyone.